Now this bad boy right here, this has been a star performer on Lionel 3 rail layouts for almost 75 years. This little feller, he's, a o, he's an O-gauge, O-gauge 3 rail, pickup power right here, but this is true O-gauge, 1 48th scale. Bigger. Some people, a lot of people, are really familiar with O27. O27 is actually 1 64th scale running on O gauge track, three rail track. You know what else is also 1 64th scale? American Flyer S gauge. That's why they look so similar when they're sitting beside each other. Don't confuse gauges, track width, against scale, model size. <laughs> this one here. The most sought after collectible F3 Lionel that, that's out there. This one. This here is the 2343. Came out in 1950, ran until 1953. Why is this one so collectible? Well, there's variations. The things first started coming out in 1948 with the 2333. It looked just like this, but it didn't have magnet traction. We'll show you what magnet traction does here in a little bit. Why these ones? Well, these ones have got hand railings on the front that, that aren't molded in. It's got ladders on the sides. It's got ladders down here on the, tr on the trucks. Did I mention these screens up here? That's the important one. Screen top, yeah. These windows here on the sides, they're, they're, they're in there. They have them. A lot, of, a lot of them, they're just covered over. They're just by, you know, this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you might be familiar with it. It showed up in one of my vintage store haul videos a few months back. From 1953 to 1955, Lionel brought us the 2353. Looks just like the 43, but they took off the, they molded in the front hand railings on it. And they put in a different top. It doesn't have the screen top on it. Oh, and they also, they also changed the way that the body mounted to the frame. Instead of there being three bolts that hold the body to the frame, they, they put a, a tab system in where it tabs in and then it's got a single bolt at the front that holds it in. From 1958 to 1966, in the true O-gauge line, Lionel brought us the 2383. Now, this is during the time when all the cost-cutting things were happening. So now, no longer, the ladders, they're, they're molded into the body. The windows, they're, they're just molded in, covered up, you know, they're painted like the body. Uh, you know, all the really nice details they're gone. All of these three locomotives that I just mentioned for all these years, all dual motored, all sold in only AA packs or is an ABA set. They were never offered individually on their own. 1955 to 1957, a true, I, I couldn't find any information on a true O gauge of 148th scale O gauge F3 being available. It's only available as an O27, a 164th scale number 2243 so they kind of bounced around a lot but but these big these big o buggers like this yeah they haven't been available they, they stopped making them in 1966 they, they might have they might have started making them again you know in the last five or ten years i i didn't i didn't look because we're looking at, at classic model trains not not reproduction ones of you know i gotta tell you when I, when, I, when I was able to lay the card hold cash down for these locomotives, man, it was, it was a moment for me. I've arrived. I'm finally a collector. I can sit at the big boys train table now. You know what I mean. These are like the, my first locomotives that I own that have over $100 re retail value. <laughs> Let's get into these things. Testing out this, this F3 right here so big i gotta grab up a different camera angle for it what a what a monster got my old test transformer hooked up here well that's oh man oh you can't just grab that and stall it out oh well that's that's pretty cool i guess it moves it's a runner bodies horrible this body, it's dirty. This isn't showing up real well, how, f how filthy it is. It's a runner, so we're going to open it up, root around inside there, see what makes this thing tick. This one's got the horn and the D-cell battery fits in this little neck of the woods right here. And they say that uh, sometimes guys like to leave, leave that battery in there and then it rots everything out. 
So we'll see if this has ever happened to this one. Give this thing just a, a good cleaning, maybe an oiling. These big buggers, they got screws underneath these trucks here. Here, two back, one up under here. This nice coupler action. These are built really nice. Was that enough? That's oh, enough to get it off. Oh, God, this thing is unbelievably heavy. Two motors in it. I don't see the horn. Oh, this body is just horrible. Horrible. Let's get this up to the sink. Give it a, a cleaning. So I got a little Dawn dish soap right over here. The shell still looks bad. There's still a lot of blemishes. Looks like it may have got some overspray or something on it. So I want to remove as much of these details as a guy can and then uh, do this. Now right now, either bringing this up, there might be guys going, hey, that's a great idea. Or there might be guys going, God, that guy's dumb. Earlier today, I washed and I waxed this B unit right here just because I, you know, I wanted to see if it, if it worked. And it really did bring it back quite a bit. The, the technique works. These things, they haven't been taken care of. You know, I'm not destroying a grade 10 or an E7 or 4 plus or whatever they're called. They're, they're not being destroyed. We're just going to make it look just a little better because the, these things, they've had a tough life. These number boards, they're lighted and they just push out from the back. They come out really, really quite easy. Gives a guy an opportunity to clean those up. And all these little detail parts that are on here, I see eBay's just got a headlight. They've got a ton of them ready to go. They'll, just guys out there, they're brand new reproduction parts. They're, they're very inexpensive, except I haven't been able to find the horn that I need. The, not, not these horns, the re <laughs> sits inside the body. Take these roof horns off. It looks like they're made out of metal. I can bend up one of these tabs, both these tabs. And when you squeeze them in, these little buttons enough, your horn, it'll, it'll come right out. One face is forward, one face is back. Metal bend overs, probably don't have too many chances to do that, but I'm guessing this is the first time it's happened since 1955. This, this ladder over here, it got broke off. There's even reproduction ones of these. I wish I would have looked at this a little closer before I started filming. So I could have had those here. One ladder off, let's get this guy Push them from the inside here a bit, so you can get underneath of them. Another ladder out of the way. This windshield is held on by one of these clips. Friction pushes down, holds really well. To take it off, the best thing to do is to open up these clips again. And get up underneath there to open this clip up a little bit so it's not, it's not grabbing. I believe that there's some form of progress taking place here. Oh, I just don't want to break that pin. Oh. Huh. Carefully remove that bugger. Oh, yeah, it's dirty. Yeah. Here I've got, this is an angle. You can put it underneath that bracket, give it just a tiny bit of up, and then you come in here and you fold these fingers back some off that pin while giving it some more up. If you work these back and forth, gentle-like, you can get these metal brackets off. These retainer clips, they've got a name. I don't know what it is. Oh, yes. That's how those come out of there. So we can get that screen out. Oh, sure. That's nice and stripped down. Now we're gonna give her some wax and let this wax set up. Hopefully we can get some of these blemishes off without removing this, this little line that's on there. That's what I don't wanna lose. Well, that came out that came out really good uh, a little hand polishing on everything and we are back to having shiny very shiny still some scratches uh you know but oh yes definitely definitely worth it look at that this is what those new side windows look like for going in here and they're they're a friction fit they're but they they, they missed it by just a little bit Maybe the thickness of the paint or something. So I've got this rat tail file and I just go around in here like this, just some, just to take off a little bit, like the, 
the thickness of the paint. And then when you get it just right, when you push these in straight, straight in, you'll feel them go in. And then when they go in, they will go all the way, all the way in the recessed, even into this recessed portion right here. So I'll go do this three more times. And when they're all done, they, they look like this. And to me, it looks like looking into one of them front-loading washing machine windows. I like the original ones better than these repros, but these, they, they stick they stick in, they hold on. They're better than the originals, but uh, they look they look funny, I think. So just me, what do you guys think? One thing I wanted to say about these horns, down inside here, you know, these pins, they're, they're, they're bent over, you know, and when you straighten them out and you shove them through the hole, then you gotta have something like this to pry them apart and get them kind of started. And then you take a screwdriver and bend them over because they're they're made out of 16 gauge. It's some thick steel. I had a heck of a time with those. So these are these are backwards pliers. They're used for taking off C-clips. That's a little hint on on those I wanted to share with you. So here's what the inside of our locomotive looks like. It's got the pickup trucks for the center rail power up in the front. I want to get all of this off there so we can take everything apart especially this frame and clean it up. We're gonna pop these screws out over here. That's gonna allow the motor to come out. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take everything out. I'm gonna take the E-unit, the battery tray and everything out as one. Insulated washers up here at the front. Piece of fish paper under here to insulate the front of this E-unit. Got the horn pickup coming in right here. So we're gonna desolder that. Screw in here on the back for this E unit, then it just comes out. So there's all of our motor control, motors, E unit, horn relay, and our trucks now. The back one's got a spring right there on it. Rear truck comes out, front truck comes out. Oh my, here's a frame, yeah. We can get in there and get this cleaned up. Then we'll get into these trucks here. Two screws here, this brass plate, will lift out, it's got our pin on it. Here's our drive line in there, seeing how this works. Helical gear cut on this drive shaft and then a straight cut gear up here. And that's where we get that growl from. Have you ever heard of these things being a big growler? Well, there's probably a gear reduction in here. Yes, there is. And that's growl, growl. That's where all this comes from. If these were helically cut, they would not make as much noise as it does the service just the truck up. These truck side frames and ladders, they'll come off with these screws right here. Now I tried to take this drive line out. It ain't gonna come out unless I take these two rivets right here, which start down here on the bottom, and they're holding this plate on right here. And this plate is holding a bushing block, just like this, right up underneath of it. You can't get rivets like that. Not that long. Pop rivets, you can't get the gun in there. But I'm gonna cut these rivets off so I can get this bearing block out because it just needs to be serviced all, all the way around. Oh yeah, we can get that drive shaft out of there. I wonder if there's any thrust washers. Nope. Either somebody's been into it before or the boys at Lionel just don't believe in them. You now, you can see these gears down inside there. But there ain't no way to, there ain't no way to take this apart any farther than this. A guy would have to have a press, and you'd have to press the wheels, pull the wheels off. Hell, there's probably even a special jig to put the, the that on there. So I've got the ultrasonic cleaner warming up right now. We're going to clean this assembly with the ultrasonic cleaner. I gave the frame a washing with just some soap and water and that scrub brush. It didn't come out too bad, but I'm going to touch up some of the areas with a Q-tip and some mineral spirits just to make sure it doesn't have any, any more oil or grease on it anywhere. Here's something that I want to throw in, though. Classic model trains. How about classic models? Who you guys know who this is? Used, she used to used to do modeling back in the day. Who is it? If you know, type it in the comments below. Some of you that may be new to the channel, like the ultrasonic cleaner is just it's the bomb. It's the bomb. You put your components in there, and then I've used simple green. Usually 50-50, sometimes 100% full strength, but it's a it's a degreaser. So this has been over here cooking. This is the flavor I've got a Rove Sun. 104 degrees, we will give that thing, I'll give it about seven minutes, pull it out, and that thing will be completely clean. Oh, that's a little touching up it needs. I didn't want to leave it in there too long, but 
Yeah, that certainly helps, especially with these assemblies. After a significant amount of time spent cleaning all the Scooby out, I think we've got her. We got some nice brass gears down there in the bottom. Cleaned the wheels up, cleaned it. It, it was just a horrible, horrible mess. This here locomotive, it comes with magnet traction. Permanent magnets, I don't know, in the centered wheels, the axle, something. That's what magnet traction does. It makes the locomotive stick. It just hangs, hangs on there. You get to looking under here, you could even see some brass bushings in there. Look at this real close. Yeah, see? That's nice. That means this thing's this thing's made to run a long, long time. I want to see if I can dribble in some oil on these axles in here. Downside is is it's got to kind of it's got to run in this tube right here. We got to get we got to get that oil down down in there. And I'm kind of thinking that, you know, unlike an HO, you, th this this can probably hold a lot of oil. One might want to get just a little a little heavy-handed is what I'm thinking to try to get that oil to get down down inside there on those axles. I wonder if a guy can get to them from in here too, up alongside these brass helical cut gears. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Because you got just this one shot now that it's all taken apart to get these oiled up. Once you get it all put together, it's going to be a little tougher to, to get in here and do this. I'm going back to my multi-purpose synthetic grease. I want to get some grease on these helical gears right in here and on these and up in here and on where our bearing blocks reside. This is a pretty healthy, pretty healthy sized locomotive. So we're going to get a little, little heavier on our grease application here also. See if maybe we can get another 50 years out of this thing. It's bearing blocks, that whole is offset just a little bit and you see that there's a there's a ball bearing stuck in this end put the thin end i think the thin end goes down yeah that that works better another application and roll it through i'm kind of liking that yeah got this brass plate a couple screws hold it on up here in the front get some grease on this gear here while i can i went into town today searching for some of these here rivets and there ain't nothing local now, there might be some Lionel parts guys out there that's got them, but I never think of that kind of stuff when I'm working on these, and then the production schedule never allows it. I had to find something local. These are number four screws right here, and they're too big. And we have a specialty bolt shop in town, and they found these metrics, and he, he said what size they were. I forgot what size these are, but they fit in the hole. Kind of tight, but they fit. And after a little time, we get something that looks like this. I think this is going to work well since I can't get those rivets in, in the, my production schedule time. So this rear truck here is complete. We've greased it all up, cleaned it, got all the axles done. Now we can move in to this first one, this front one. This little clip kind of helps hold on this front coupler. You get the coupler out of the way just a little bit. You can get these two screws, which holds on this, this, front, this front body, this thing. Little screws everywhere, everywhere. Little tiny screw underneath here. Take this guy out. Now we'll remove this shield. These couplers up here, they're electromagnet. There's a plunger inside here. That plunger comes down and will open up this coupler. They didn't stick with this design very long, but in order to get this thing disassembled, we gotta get this wire out of there. Take these two out right here on the back of this brass plate. And there, here's our drive line and our bearing blocks. Get these truck side covers off. Oh, this stuff is so dirty. Don't don't put painted stuff in the Ultra Sonic cleaner. It will take that paint off very, very fast. Since these are painted, I'm gonna hand wash these. This here is chemically blackened, so it doesn't lose any of its paint color. We're gonna desolder this front wire. Yep. So this coupler is sitting in there like that. Twist it, stand it up. Push it down, come right out. With our pickups right under here, two screws, and that's what it looks like underneath there. So we can just pull our red wire out, which goes to the horn, and our black wire out, which goes to the coupler, attaches to this shoe right here. Now we've got our front truck disassembled and ready for cleaning. This I'll hand clean, and a lot of these other smaller parts I'm going to put in the ultrasonic cleaner. So you see these wheels got some thick grease in them because they don't, they don't roll very well. All of our components are sitting right here. Front truck, almost identical. 
to the rear truck. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, mess a bunch of time doing the exact same thing. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the parts that are a little different. Going down to these truck, these pickups right here. This is this is what they look like. Got two little little fingers over here that are pushing down for this decoupler pickup. And it goes. This is the front of the locomotive. The gear goes forward. It's got a shiny side. It's got a non-shiny side. Shiny side is going to go up. Plus, it's got some alignment pins on it, and it can really only go on one way. Front of the truck, the gear goes towards the front. And the black wire for the uncoupler, it's gonna come up over here. So we're putting the black wire through here, and we're gonna put the red horn pickup through over here. Careful not to pinch any of these wires as this goes back on, and you're gonna have something that's gonna look a lot like this. The, wa the bolts with the insulated washers will go in here. Little snuggage, short end it goes down. Holes offset just a little bit. Tall end goes up, short end goes down. Our coupler, pass it up from the bottom, 90 degree it one way or the other, pass the coupler through. So that's gonna bolt on like so, but we need to solder the wire back in. Now that the coupler wire's on, got our shield. You gotta form fit this to kind of fit in the front end there where you think it's gonna go. The dang smallest little screw out of the whole locomotive right here. Yep. Shield is on and it, it floats in there. So that screw's got a shoulder on it so it can't be tightened down too much. We'll get these little screws here with the countersink heads. They go in up here at the front. Coupler goes over the bolster pin. This little hairpin clip is gonna go in like this. It sets like this. And once this is in the frame, the frame will hold it on. Areas to remember to grease are these points under here. And of course you want to pick up your roller. Thing looks like it's a carbon roller, golly, it's... This, this loco's got a lot of miles on it. Man, oh man, oh man. Down into this electromagnet for this plunger that's in there. And of course you want to grease around here for this action. And I'm just gonna put just a little taste right up in here because it looks like this might over time kind of end up sitting down on it. So that is our front truck reassembled. Of course, before we put the motors on, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this gear is sufficiently greased. These, both, these trucks aren't gonna go on permanently right now. When I put these on for the final assembly, I'll make sure to grease up them bolster pins. There is the front powered A unit truck. Trucks disassembled, serviced, greased. Yeah. Now we just gotta do all the electrics on it. This here is the dummy A unit, and the body comes off just like the powered A unit. There's two screws that are at the back to take out, and then there's one up here under the nose. Swing the pilot around. You can get your screwdriver down in there and take that one out. I wanted to show you these little clips. I, I like to call these dang things Jesus clips, because when you launch one across the room, that's what you say when you lose it. Now these ones are squeezed on around here. They've actually got a, a real name. I don't know what it is. They're crimped around a, a groove that's cut in this bolster pin right here. So you gotta, you gotta spread them out some. Get in here, if I can get the tools to get my fingers out of the way. And that's where you get your flight of the pin is when that's taking place. The truck comes out. I wanna get this light bulb out of the way. They've made it where you can remove this electrode right here. And I'm hoping that I can compress the spring through this slot, the bottom fiber washer, and then there. That truck is out. Now, since this has got power pickup for the light bulb, it is a completely powered pickup truck. It doesn't have a motor, of course, but it's got the electrical for that light bulb. I wanna clean up this frame. I wanna disassemble these wheels.
just like the other ones, cleaning it up, getting 50 years of grease and grime off of the dummy A. One would think that the frames between the dummy A and the powered A would be identical. And I thought that for sure. And I got to looking at it and decided that they're not identical. This one here, up on where this bolster area is at, it's milled out. I'd have to say eighth of an inch by a little under half an inch wide. This one is not. Now, here's the dummy truck. Here's the powered truck. You can tell that because of this gear. They're, they're identical, you know, except for the fact that this one doesn't have any gears in it. But when these go on the bolsters, this one is held on with one of these Jesus clips. You, you can't do that over here because the thing, because this one, it has a spring, and then the motor bolts on, and then the top of the motor holds the truck in. So the frames are just the tiniest, tiniest bit different. Now, I suppose if you had a dummy frame, because that's the only difference, oh, there's no horns, no holes for the horn. But if you're an accomplished machinist, or you know one, a guy could certainly correct these two flaws. Just something to keep in mind. Wanted to point that out. Jesus clips for this back bolster pin on the dummy unit. These are called snap ring pliers. These got these little, that little horseshoe shape right there. I can come in here with these pins. I can give it a squeeze and it's gonna squeeze this thing shut. So now I've squeezed that Jesus clip shut. Now the truck is captured and it can't pull off past that pin. This here B unit base, it's, it's got a bit of a problem. These little bumps out, bump outs here for this bolster pin, it looks like it's been dropped and part of it's broken off. And this ain't, this ain't no good because the, the truck, it won't, it won't sit square. It'll put a lot of strain on this bolster hole. So I'm hoping that these things are about the thickness of two of these here fancy washers. And I was just thinking that I, I could put a couple of these on the truck. And then when I put the truck on, that'll take up the uh, thickness of what I've ground off here. So we got to have a nice flat spot. So I'm going to grind those off as carefully as I can. Shim these trucks up. Get these things reinstalled back on. Well, after three days worth of shooting and editing and cleaning and repairing, this is the level that we're at right now. Got all the chassis, all the trucks, all the bodies looking absolutely gorgeous. Them bodies came out nice. Them, them trucks, them, them chassis, the frames, the shells, everything. Oh my God. I, I just, I've got so much time in this video. It's going to be almost like an hour long. We're going to kick it into two parts. What you just seen right now, part one. Part two, we're gonna take the motors apart. We're gonna get them cleaned up, lube them up, get them in, get the E, three position E unit lubed, get get the horn relay working. But you know, I don't have a horn yet. I gotta get a horn somewhere. This was just getting really long, so I gotta break it into two parts. That'll be up in just two days. We'll have it up here very shortly. I, I'm just behind, I'm behind. I don't know why, I don't, I don't even work in the winter time other than doing this. How could I be so far behind? boggles my mind. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Ron. Classic Model Trains.